What's up 360 North fans, shop day today. We're working on Z's brand new uh, 2015 Articat High Country. As you saw, saw in the beginning of the video, it was flashing ECU 17. So that's an engine code indicating that there's a fault with the exhaust gas temperature sensor. Uh, different manufacturers call them different things. Uh, O2 sensors, exhaust temperature sensors, exhaust gas temperature sensors. And it seems to be a, a reoccurring problem if you do some searching on the internet, the various uh, uh, snowmobile forums, you'll see that various manufacturers have issues with these on their two strokes. Um, if your sled is fuel injected, and it's a newer sled, chances are you have one of these. One of the issues, of course, is that uh, through Articat, this is about $260 Canadian once you pay the government their portion. However, we found a way that can save you a little stack of cash by getting a uh, General Motors uh, part for actually a 2011 diesel pickup truck. So um, that's what we're talking about today. We're gonna get right to it right away, and we're gonna get this thing fixed up and get that error code taken care of. So the part that we're dealing with is uh, from General Motors. You can see here it says AC Delco rather than Articat. Uh, this part costs about 100 bucks, taxes included, the whole nine yards. Um, and it is, uh, the specs are virtually identical to the Articat one, except sub substantially cheaper. The, Artic or the GM part number for this is going to be GM1264346. So write that down if you don't wanna buy a $260 Articat one if you live in Canada. If you live in the States, I bet you you could probably get this for like 50, 60 bucks American. We just get hosed in Canada. Obviously since it's a shop day, you're gonna need some tools to work on the sled. A couple of the tools you're gonna need, we're gonna be using a ratchet with our Torx bits. If you just have Allen key Torx bits, that's fine. Um, but we're using a quarter inch ratchet with an extension. You need a T20 Torx bit, T30 Torx bit. Fancy man's magnetic tool tray. If you don't have one of these, just use some of grandma's uh, old Tupperware there, a butter dish or whatever, just so you don't lose any hardware while you're working on it. 17 millimeter uh, a wrench and a pair of channel locks or water pump pliers, whatever you call them, uh, to remove the uh, nut on the top of the gas tank. And that's all you're really gonna need. So it's gonna be super easy and we're gonna get right to it. Moving the hood looks like a daunting task, but it's actually quite easy. You're gonna remove your side covers, pull the clip, remove the side cover. On the other side of the machine, it has the same clip and also a thumb screw if you still have it. This one doesn't. Pull it off. The next step, you're gonna remove two T20 Torx bits. There's one on either side. It's this one in the, the top closest to the rear of the cab. He's fancier than I am. He doesn't use grandma's Tupperware. He's got a magnetic tool tray. Ooh la la. Once you remove those two, there's also two at the front. The access from the underside. It's just above your A-arm. You might need an extension to get in there depending on what kind of bit you're using. And the exact same thing on the other side. Lastly, there's two screws on the underside. Depending on what kind of bumper you have, if you have the mountain bumper like I do, some of the bits won't fit in there, so you might have to improvise. If you have this bumper or just the little strip that originally came on this sled, uh, the bolts are easily accessible. you're having trouble finding them, they're just right at the front of the plastic skid plate. They are considerably longer than the other ones. And there's two. Once those are removed, if you have the goggle warmer bag, Press down on the sides, pull it away from the plastic. Same as the other side. Pop that out of the way. And lastly, you're gonna undo the harness for your gauge cluster. There's just a little tab there. It might be hard for you to see. Give that a little press. 
and unplug it. Now you're ready to remove the hood. Grab it on both sides. Get a little wiggle towards you. You'll feel the front of the, uh, the hood come out of the intake plug. And then there's clips at the back that it hooks into. You'll feel those release. And just pick the whole thing up. It comes off as one giant piece, pretty slick. And set that aside where you're not gonna step on it or break it. Here, just sit nice. And now that that's off, you can see where we're working today. So this is your exhaust gas temperature sensor plug. It's right here. And uh, if you're working on one of the newer uh, Pro Cross Pro Climb series sleds, um, the GM sensor is exactly the same. Um, the specs are pretty much identical. Uh, the part numbers are very similar and the connector is just plug and play. All right, the hood's off. You can see the exhaust temperature sensor is just right here. You can see the cord runs up and it's actually connected underneath this panel. So in order to take it out, we're actually gonna need to yank that off too. Um, so we'll start taking that apart. The way you gotta get at that is there's two Torx bit sets at the top. You use a T30 Torx bit to pull those out. Okay, once that's off, next you're gonna remove your gas cap. This is normally on there. So this ring actually threads on here and it holds this piece down. So in order to take that off, I'm sure Articat has a fancy tool for that, but uh, we're not fancy around here. So we just use a set of uh, water pump pliers, channel locks, whatever you call them. Set the jaws wide, set that on uh, the flat portions and then just give it a spin. Just keep working it off. It'll come off. Some of them are tighter than others. Um, it might get a little knurled up, but uh, still works. So don't worry about it. You also gotta pull your side clips off. So just give this lower clip a little rotate, you know, release, and a little wiggle up top. Free things up. Same thing on the other side. Unplug your reverse uh, beeper if you got one. Just give a little wiggle on the clips on the back. It'll pop right off. Z's got his tether installed here, so this won't come completely out of the way, but mostly out of the way. Okay, so you got this up and out of the way. You can see the cable runs along here. It's clipped in on the back side of your coolant jug. And then, if you look right in here, this is the connector way back in there. Okay, so if you have giant hands, you might have a hard time getting in there, but I do not, so I should be fine. Same as the other connectors, just push on the tab, it'll release. Unhook it from the back of the coolant jug. Got to move this coolant hose out of the way just temporarily. Just kind of feed it along. So you can get it at a point where you can actually get it out of there. Kind of watch as you do it. There's some wire loom and some little things that's kind of snake around. And there it is. 
Then you use a 17 millimeter wrench to pull it off the sled. There you go. And that is your exhaust gas temperature sensor. So this one, obviously it's a little fouled up there. They'll pretty much all look like that. Um, there's been a malfunction with this sensor. It's now throwing a code. You can still ride your sled even though you're throwing the wrench for this. It will uh, alter your fueling a little bit with this not working, um, but basically you'll be able to get the sled back home. It's not recommended by the manufacturer to ride extended periods of time with your wrench on, so you will want to change this. But if you're on a trip, um, you're okay to keep going. There are guys who have made basically a bypass with a connector like this that tricks the sled into thinking that this sensor is working fine. Again, probably not recommended by Cat, but it'll make sure you enjoy your weekend. And uh, you know, at a hundred bucks, it's not gonna cost you much to fix this now. Okay, we've got the old sensor, the new sensor. You can see here, plugs are the same. Obviously one is gray and one is black. The plugs are the same so this is gonna be plug and play if you have a pro cross sled this is plug and play with the gm one uh, if you're using uh either uh like a crossfire or an f-series sled uh, you will need to do some cutting and splicing so you have to cut this connector off you have to splice in this one but again you know for the money that you're going to save you got to decide for yourself whether it's worth the extra hassle or not but on the pro cross it's uh, plug and play which is sweet Installation is exactly the opposite of putting it in. We'll do that now. All right, put a thin drop of oil just on the threads so that hopefully they don't rust together. And thread the new sensor back in. Seventeen millimeter wrench. Just snug it up, you don't have to kill it. And then you wanna fish this back in, kind of sort of how it was before. New sensors installed, just put everything back together, same way you took it all apart. So we kind of went the easier route by removing this plastic. You might be able to get by without taking that off. But uh, as you can see, there's pretty tight tolerances. I mean, there's only so much you can bend and flex this plastic to fit your arm in there. And since it's such a close fit, you probably just gotta pull it off. It's only two bolts plus that gas ring and it comes off. So that's not that big of a deal. Also, don't forget to plug in your reverse beeper. Very important that you have that. I'm joking, it's actually kind of annoying. So put the hood back on. Make sure you got no tools in the way. It's always a good idea to bend your harness up out of the way. Otherwise it's gonna get trapped in a spot and then the hood won't go back on. Kind of line things up. You want to make sure that the front fits back into that rubber gasket for your intake. Harness back in. And we'll reinstall our goggle warmer. Just like that. Let's start it up and see how we did.
Okay guys, that's it. It's pretty simple. We swapped out the sensor and we saved 160 bucks. Obviously we work on our sleds the way we work on them. If you decide to do this to your sled and the sled grenades a week later, obviously we're not responsible for that and you're doing this type of stuff at your own risk. Um, obviously this has been done to this sled. Tons of other guys have done it if you read online and uh, there hasn't been any issues. So it's not really something you need to worry about, but if you're doing this, you're doing it at your own risk. If you like our videos, share and subscribe them. If you got a buddy who has an Articat and needs to fix it up and likes to save money, share him with the video so he can save some money too. If you uh, want to visit us on our website at 360north.com, you can pick up your own 360 North gear. You can check us out on our Facebook page. We're also on Twitter and Instagram. We'll see you next time, guys.